if there's one thing that frightens anyone who uses a smartphone, a tablet, a netbook, notebook, laptop, desktop, server, it's the loss of both raw data and application software. It's frightening. And if you don't know or understand computers, it can be absolutely catastrophic to you in some cases. So, how do you prevent losing data? What are some of the steps you can take to prevent it actually happening, if possible? And in the event of the unthinkable actually happening, what options present themselves to you? In this video, let's discuss it. G'day everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Bit of a discussion video for you for a Friday here at the Backyard Tech Channel and this stems off the back of last night's events for me. My long time viewers and so subscribers know, apart from the fact I can't talk, <laughs> I have dedicated my career in the IT industry to dealing with hardware. Now, there has been opinions that I have sort of kneecapped myself by not getting into software, but I've spent my career dealing with hardware problems. Hardware diagnosis, fault finding, replacement, servicing, and general maintenance and upkeep of servers for small and medium businesses, PCs, laptops, etc. As much as I hate working on laptops. But, data loss. Now, I've suffered it, obviously, with last night as well. So what are some of the steps you can take to prevent foul-ups? Now, let's face it. Computers, by nature, are not infallible. People would have you think that solid-state storage is actually less likely to fail in comparison to mechanical storage, hard drives. That is not exactly a 100% true assumption. Whilst, as I've said in the hard drive video we did last year here at the Backyard Tech Channel, an SSD of some description, now whether it is an, uh, an SSD hard drive, NVMe, M2, M.2, whatever, Solid state storage subsystems are not infallible. They can still fail. They are an electrical component, so they can still fail. Whilst they won't suffer from a mechanical failure, such as voice coil or, or spindle motor or actuator, whatever you want to call it in a mechanical hard drive, they can still suffer from bad flash chips, power spikes, which can fry the, the power circuits on the SSD. Possibly a bad sector, to use a hard drive terminology, a bad sector on a flash chip. So they can still fail. There's just a few things less on them to fail when referenced to a mechanical hard drive. But data loss to anyone is frightening. You lose your data. So, what are some of the steps you can take to prevent or mitigate as much as possible the possibility of data loss? One is backup. It's absolutely vital today. In fact, not just today. Backups have been vital for years. You back things up. But in that saying that, preventative maintenance on your equipment is also a form of mitigating the possibility, keeping the systems clean. Now, I don't always practice what I preach. I admit that. The systems I maintain sporadically, as in physically, I'm asked to go up and have a walk, I clean them. I clean my main PC out as often as it needs to be. The hypervisor gets a blowout with 
compressed air every month or so. So preventative maintenance from that point of view. But data backup. Now there's myriad of ways we can back up our data today. There's backing up to the cloud, which I'm not a fan of as you know. There's backing up to physical medium. There's backup software. Now you've got the Windows image backup. You've got ESUS, you've got AOMI, you've got um, a Cronus, if necessary, for Windows. With Linux systems, there's plenty of backup systems available that will do bare metal restores like System Back. For Unix, there's DD and RSync and all that type of stuff. So, backups. What are some of the things you should back up regularly? One such thing is raw data. In the event of the unthinkable happening and you lose raw data, you've lost it. So, when you back up raw data, what are you backing up? Well, with Windows, you want to back up the user folder. With Linux, you want to back up both the root and the home folder. Same again with Unix. The root and the home folder should be backed up. There is a plethora of platforms that you can back up on. We've got tape. We've got optical disk. We've got portable hard drives. We've got backup systems from Western Digital, like the big archivers. There's your QNAP systems you can back up to. In the event of a catastrophic data failure, say, a hard drive dies. Now, don't get stuck into me because there are some people out there who'll say, oh, SSDs never fail, neither do NVMe and neither do M.2. They, 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 they never fail. You'll never have to back up because they'll never fail. Don't listen to that. They will fail. If you're going to back up your home PC or something, what should you back up? Well, ideally, you should do two backups. You should do a user backup of the user folder, and then you should do a full resto ISO backup whether that's over to a network drive or a portable hard drive or whatever, you should do two backups. So for Windows, you back up the whole of the user folder. Now, in this case, there's a couple of options you can do. You can either just back up the user folder or you can go into folder options, unhide uh, certain folders and back up the app data folder as well because that's normally a hidden folder. You want to back up the user folder but you also want to back up as a full resto ISO image. So in the event of a complete catastrophic failure, you can back a new hard drive in and restore your operating system. Now the Windows image backup isn't as good as something like say, ESUS to do free or AOMI or Cronus or whatever. You want to back up. Now, let's say you have a catastrophic failure and all you've backed up is your raw data. So you've lost the operating system and you've lost your software. The thing is, as I've always said, if you lose the operating system and the programs, stiff. But if you've got the raw data, you can get yourself going again. Now, in the case of a small to medium business, often they'll be able, they'll have the operating system disks available to them. They can reinstall the OS. And in theory, they should have the disks pertaining to centralized application distribution, aka applications that run directly from a central server. They can be reinstalled. Then all you'd have to do is restore the raw data back. But ideally, you want two backups with Windows. As I said, you want the user folder and you want the full resto image. Now, in the case of a network system, what normally I've done in the past is backed up the server, assuming, assuming the workstations have got redirected folders. So instead of the workstation stuff being stored on the workstation, the workstation stuff is all stored on the server. One point of backup, which means you just restore 
the entire ISO restoration image and everything comes back again. In the event that nothing of that is set up or you don't have roaming profiles, etc., you really ideally should be backing up the user folder for the workstations regularly. Raw data loss is, that's it. You've lost that raw data. Now, let's say that you have not heeded advice by many IT firms and companies and you've had a catastrophic storage platform failure. What options present themselves to you? Well, they're not cheap, put it that way. And that's data recovery companies. Some of them are reasonably priced. Some of them are very expensive. There's, I think there's one or two in Melbourne that to recover a one tera hard drive is upwards north of about 2,000 Aussie bucks. Data recovery is not cheap. In fact, in some cases, data recovery is as much as buying another system again. There are a myriad of ways data recovery can be done in these places by transferring the platters out of the bucket drive, assuming they're usable, and putting them into another drive in a dust-free environment, or reading the platters by laser and then syncing the data together on a drive to be returned back to the individual don't want to have to spend money. Especially if you're a small or medium business, that's expensive. So you have to do your backups. Now, admittedly, I back up. I back up once a week, maybe once a fortnight. I have two backups. The user folder from the Windows PC goes out to the V490's net store drive, and the resto ISO image goes onto my portable four terabyte hard drive. Two backups. The Mac used to back up to the QNAP. I have to fix my QNAP, but it used to time machine to the QNAP once a week. And that is a full time machine resto image. So why would you want to do a resto image instead of just backing up the user folder? Essentially, saves time on restoring your system. Now, in the case of Linux, I am familiar with system back. Now, my Linux virtual machines, my six permanent Linux virtual machines, all back up using system back. They back up, well, they were backing up to the QNAP drive. full resto image, meaning, for example, my beloved OpenMAN driver fails, no, it uses rsync, sorry, uh, Jimmy Acklaw's uh, LX Legacy that I use occasionally fails, I can restore it to exactly what I want. Linux is not infallible with data loss. You put it on a hardware, a hard drive, I'm sorry, and that hard drive fails. Linux will fail. The same with Unix. You put it on a hard drive that's a bit flaky and the hard drive fails, your Unix machine has failed. So what other options do you have? Now, a good friend of mine backs up to tape. Even today, backs up to tape. We all know that I want to get my hands on, I think it's the 8877 series HP streamer 9-inch nine, uh, nine tape drive. I mean, nine-track tape drive, I'm sorry. I'd love that. It's a streaming backup system. I'm not sure how many tapes it would take for me to back up 230 gig. But backups are essential. Now... Some people would have you say that their computers have never failed up. Is that good luck or good management? To me, a bit of both. You can mitigate the possibility of hardware failure by doing preventative maintenance on your systems, cleaning them, making sure that, you know, for example, the heat sink on your proc 
is clean. Now, if you're using a water-cooled system, you don't have to worry about de-dusting the heat sink. But, you know, your PCI bus slots, they fill up with dust, dirt, grit. Blow them out. Clean them out. Get a bit of contact cleaner in there to freshen up the points. If you're using a SAS or SATA expansion card, clean the expansion card, clean the back plane. Clean it all. That's known as preventative maintenance. But also, make sure... I've, I've done this a lot. I would rather lose applications and OSs when compared to raw data. Now, raw data for me is... The My Documents folder alone, okay is 6.6 .6 gig, dating back eight years, okay? 6.6 .6 gig of raw data, that is Word documents, that is Excel spreadsheets, that's PDFs, um, error logs, SSH logs from everywhere, um, yeah, just masses and masses of, of documents and pictures and um, stuff like that. So when I create backups here at home on the, on the Windows PC, I back up the user folder first and then I do a full resto backup, meaning if the hard drive fails, it's all good. With the Mac, it would times, you know, um, whatever it is. What's it called? Time sync. No. I can't think what it's called, man. Hang on, I better get that right. <laughs> uh, time machine. So I time machine back it up. As with Linux, Linux, I use system back, and with the V490, I rsync it. So I've always got backups of everything. But one of the things you can do for preventative maintenance is clean your systems. Now, in the case of a server, compressed air and just blow the dust out of it. Just blow the dust out of it. Dust is detrimental to electronic componentry. You know, so you need to clean things out. But you need to back things up too. And in the event of the unthinkable, if you can get away with it for less than a thousand Aussie bucks, you're doing well depending on how many gigs slash terabytes you need to recover. There are multiple, multiple well-known data recovery companies out around the world. Some of them are very good, but don't expect it to take a short amount of time. In some cases, some data recovery companies can take up to five days to two working weeks to recover your data. It's not a quick process. Bit of a discussion video there for you for a Friday. Um, have to see what else crops up through the day. I'm about to head out again. I'm hoping this one doesn't become another data recovery job. Otherwise, I'm going to be doing data recovery for the next few days, aren't I? Stick around. Don't forget, 7 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time tonight, GMT UTC Plus 11. The Backyard Tech Channel live stream conversations return with the TGIF edition. Until then, as always, we shall catch you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.